I will never predict Watford to beat Luton. I will not do it. It goes against the very fabric of my being. Luton Town 3, Watford nil for no justification whatsoever other than Rob Edwards' masterclass. He's going to turn it around. Everything's going to change. All in place for Saturday 12.30. We're going to smash him 3 0. We're going to smash him 3 0. We're going to smash him 3 0. I just got back from Luton 3, Watford 0. And my oh my. That was a game, wasn't it? We turned up. I've been very critical of Rob Edwards this entire season saying the tactics don't work. There's no fight from the team and the players needed to show up. And I said before the game, I predicted a 2-0. I said, if Luton Town can't turn up today against Watford, then there is no hope for us this season. And we will be battling relegation. You know what? The players turned up today. And you know what? Rob Edwards got his tactics absolutely spot on and rob i apologize for any grief any words i've said about you look you needed two weeks to clear your heads and revert back to the tactics that you know work and i think a big part of that today was colton morris being available and colton morris just a word on him what a player he is like you fire a ball into him it sticks and I'm glad he's back from his injury and I'm glad we didn't flog him through the 90 minutes so he didn't need it and he took his goal incredibly well and I think that was the first goal we scored direct from a corner for I don't I don't even want to try and guess when our last corner <laughs> led to a goal direct it was fantastic Doughty floating the ball over towering header completely unmarked and you know what going back to the beginning of the game and <laughs> The banter from the Watford social media account to post that little clip saying, uh, just taking in the sights. <laughs> it was funny. It, I found it hilarious. And, uh, you know, good thing the social media account turned up because the team definitely didn't turn up. And I was nervous before the game, but the players, they shut me right up. And all this talk, building up to the game, cleverly saying, I, I want to make Luton hurt more. Uh, our players, we, you know, we told them what it's about. And they even brought in Paul Robinson, like a former Watford player to, you know, be around as first team coach around the team. And the Watford players, they didn't show up today. There was no fight. At the end of the game, Watford fans were <laughs> quite rightly letting the team know exactly what they thought and that was very very amusing i must say right let's talk about lucian then shall we what a performance today every single man that stepped across that white line can be absolutely proud of their performance today um special shout out to tom holmes because you know what first start and he was key in clark's goal his quick thinking from the corner, turns, spun on it, just directs it towards goal. And uh, there were so many bodies in the box. So Jordan Clark got that final touch. And I'm delighted for Jordan Clark because he's had a very rough season so far. You know, ups, downs. He scored goals, but a lot of people say, nah, he's not really working in this system. And with the system, delighted. Back three, yes, there are still some Rob Edwards signatures in that back three like you, you saw tom Holmes sort of way up tracking his man the whole way across the pitch and you know that was a bit weird and then you see daiki hashioka also going way up and then even the second half when alfie doughty was playing left center back you saw alfie doughty tracking forward and breaking forward with the ball but i didn't think that was a problem today um I think another team, a better team that actually turned up better than Watford probably could have punished us a bit more at the back today. Everyone did their job. Absolutely everyone. And uh, 
Yeah, so fair play Tom Holmes. Shame he had to come off. Good to see Daiki Hashioka again. Maybe he's a little bit lightweight, but you know what? He puts himself about. First thing he did was like launch head first into a, a, a challenge. And we're thinking, oh God, oh, is he injured? But no, he was, he was absolutely fine. He got up. At one point he was like getting the crowd G'd up as well. Love a bit of that. The crowd were very good today. Yeah, at the beginning, yeah, there was a bit of trepidation. One more bit about Tom Holmes. <laughs> In the first five minutes, he try to lob Kaminsky. It was a back pass. I don't know what he was trying to do, but that would have ruined the atmosphere pretty much immediately. They lobbed Kaminsky. I was right behind it, main stand block E, and it narrowly missed the post. Absolutely mad. You know, otherwise, Tom Holmes, he grew into the game. He was fantastic. But I'll be on Alfie Doughty as well now. He's playing left centre-back. I thought Joe Johnson would come on and play left centre-back. And this was when Reese Burke went off. So there was a reshuffle across the defence. And Alfie Doughty, I don't think I was aware of your game, mate. Putting in crunching tackles, anticipating, chasing back, winning balls back. It was a absolutely brilliant defensive performance from Alfie Doughty because that, that's a side of the game and Alfie Doughty's game that we don't see very often. Very good. And uh, yeah, the, the defensive situation is quite concerning. I won't lie. You know, right now, I think we're just down to Mark McGuinness and Mark McGuinness was touch and go before this game. I will say about Mark McGuinness, that was the best performance from Mark McGuinness. He's a warrior. He was winning his headers. He was winning his tackles. There was one tackle in the first half where uh, I'm not even going to pronounce, I'm not going to attempt it. Their number eight, he was probably the only Watford player that turned up. Chak for Tadze. Ah, I did it. I did it. I think they call him Dave because they, they you know, don't have the ability to pronounce his name. And he, he broke through. He was about to take a shot. And McGuinness, last ditch tackle. Bam, fantastic. And this is the performance, not just for McGuinness, but for the entire team to build on. I'd like to thank Watford for getting our season started. We needed that performance. It brought the fans and the players together. That was probably our first good performance of the season, without a doubt. Yes, we've had two wins. The Millwall 1-0 away win, that was a good away performance at the Den. The Sheffield Wednesday 2-1 win, that was one of the most awful, awful performances I've ever seen. But you know what? Today, it ticked both boxes. Fight and also desire. And that is what you need to start going the right way up the league. Fair play. Yes, at the end of the game, the team did the lap of honour and the team really looked like they enjoyed it and tremendous effort from every Luton fan because not one person left. It was tremendous to see everyone clapping, everyone singing for the team. I think Rob, you know, we, we talked about it in the pre-match. It looks like he's struggling with his mental health. And yes, there's a lot of noise. He's a manager in the public eye. Everyone has opinions. Quite rightly so, he's come in for criticism because the tactics haven't worked. And today, he listened to Reese Burke, he listened to all the noise, and he's gone back to the basics. He went back to what worked for us in the 22-23 season where we got promoted. Because that is what the team set up for. There was no fanciness. We were direct. Having two strikers up top, I think, really helps. Because you know what? Like, in a one-man up top formation, Elijah was looking very isolated. It worked having Morris really close to him. Because also, when Elijah goes and chases the ball, which he did very well today, the only thing missing from Elijah's performance today was a goal. And he's very unlucky at the moment. But it will come for Elijah. But having Morris and Elijah up top together, it just works so well. Because one of them will get the ball, bring the other into play. One will drop, hunt the ball down, or press further forward. And it works so well today. All in all, an absolutely fantastic performance all around. I'm sure I haven't even mentioned some of the players that were so good today. I'm sure I haven't mentioned every single player that's done so well today just also a quick mention for Pelly came on Pelly's had a lot of stick he looked great he's a big game player I'm delighted for him could be crucial as the season goes on we, we got a lot of games to play so we'll need him we will I am concerned about the amount of injuries but hopefully players will start shaking them off and we got a big game coming up now against Sunderland I guess I wouldn't say I'm expecting anything from this game but what I am expecting is to carry on the fight and desire from this performance today. That is all I ask. And also keep the 3-5-2 that we played today because 
it works. It was shown that it works because the performance today was fantastic. But also, fight and desire, please. Keep that. Keep it all the same. But I think that's probably enough from me. I suggest that you all enjoy your weekend because you know what? Three points over your nearest and dearest rivals is a great way to start the weekend. It really is. So everyone, go enjoy your weekends now. We're doing a post-match phone-in at 9 p.m. And if you're watching this before, you can get involved. If you're watching it after, you can listen back. We're going to have Hatters fans getting in touch, telling us their thoughts about the game today. If you love Luton Town content, remember, like this video and subscribe to our channel. Have a great day. Have a great weekend. And most importantly, come on, you Hatters. Three points against them lot.